Welcome back everyone to, I don't know what episode this is, the episode after the previous one in Advanced Tactics Gold. We've made our push towards Fishhawk, our initial push, we're on the road. We've abandoned the southern coastal road in favor of the central road just because it's too much marsh which is well defended. I think we're going to be able to break through here. So that's actually going to be one of our first orders of business is, um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is push my artillery forward because let's remember the sequence of events, bombard and then do everything else. Now, I can move this unit here, and he can just constantly bombard this unit here. That's one thing to do. However, when he eventually wants to come across, I found that um, if we look, it uh, would take 155 movement cost for him to get here, which means I think, I think it means if he moves to one of these, which is 25, it would still cost 130 to move across into Marsh. So basically, I think it's impossible for this artillery to move. Um, I, I guess if I just do a quick calculation, the river adds 30 action points. So technically, it should only be like 50 to go across from here to here, or 55. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to, instead of moving the ar artillery to this hex here in order to bombard here, I'm actually going to waste a lot of his action points moving all the way around to here. So this is going to cost 75. And now he doesn't have much he can bombard with, but he's going to get two rounds off. I'll still take the two rounds. I'm just going to attack this weakened unit over here. See if we can get anything done. I mean, pff, not much, but something, right? We killed three units, supposedly. That's better than nothing, which is really a movement. It was a movement turn for the artillery anyway. Now, this guy is in a much better shape. He can move here, which is going to cost him 20. And now he can get off a full artillery barrage for eight rounds, almost full on the marsh units in the south. Although it's not killing nearly as many. You can see even though two, two rounds to eight rounds it's killed five instead of three, but lowered the rest of their stats. And that's gonna be important because this hex is not gonna be super well defended at the end of this turn. I plan on pushing a lot of units forward. The idea here is if the AI realizes, I mean, if anybody, even I would do this, like I'll probably pull my units out of London now if you realize a city is threatened, you're going to heavily defend it. So what we have to do is kind of stack up and then breach and fly through all the way to Fishhawk before they have the time and awareness to start defending it. So basically, uh, we need to push forward as hard as we can on this turn and on the next turn, or we need to stack up and then push forward all the way into Fishhawk. I think three hexes away already seems like close enough that their um, alarm bells would be going off. And we need to at least push far enough to cut them off on this turn. So, yeah, I mean, that's probably going to signal alarm bells for them. Great. So that means that we're going to do some attacks. I think the best thing for us to do is to push this unit forward. Move here. And let's do a double attack on this armored car. Even though they have some combat morale advantages, if we do a double attack, which is going to be just under the attack stack limit, it should be, our units are much better than theirs, so the our, our armored cars are supposedly tin cans, right? Quote unquote tin cans according to the description. They don't stand up well against armor. So if we, as soon as we attack them, they should just crumble. And good, okay. It's, still we lost two units, but we killed all three of their armored cars, which is good. We're gonna move both units forward. They already spent the action points to move forward, so we'll do that. And this is very interesting. We have the opportunity to actually destroy a headquarters here. Now I'm gonna move this unit forward here, I think here, yeah. It's just so we can get the scouting information. Okay, we have seven armored cars here. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna use the 166 to attack this, and I'm gonna use the 140 to attack this. Actually, yeah, that seems like the only thing we can really do because we want to keep the tanks on the road so that they can push on Fishhawk a little faster. Although we can get here. No, if we do that though, hmm. And this has 70, oh my gosh. we could actually push to Fishhawk this turn. 
Do we think it's defended? Wow. Okay, wow. It'll probably be defended, but only lightly. I think it's worth taking the chance. We can always move forward and then attack, I think, right? Yeah, we can move forward and attack, so let's just move forward. Uh, we don't have any reconnaissance. Okay, so let's push a few units forward, see if somehow we can get enough reconnaissance on that hex. We need to keep the AT gun machine gun group here because that's going to be defending. Actually, I mean, machine guns aren't going to be as good in planes. Although they will be good attacking into the planes. So let's leave that unit here and let's move. Let's move this unit forward. Oh my gosh, only. F okay, I think we can take fish shock on this turn. How much, how's your supplies? You have 1.7 rounds, so even if you're cut off this turn, it's fine. <laughs> okay, we're pushing in. Here we go. Wow, there it is. So, Fishhawk is ours. We lost a tank and a machine gun, but we killed 10 riflemen and we captured the city. So that was phenomenal. Wow, at this point, do we even risk attacking? Um, we need to make sure a unit can push forward here and which is just to cover the advance it would be really preferable if i could both move here and attack this because that's going to cost a lot if we can actually destroy this unit it's going to cost a lot of um, political points for them to re recreate another general etc so we don't have any inf any idea about what the general's stats are what his morale or his combat bonus is, what level he's at. All I know is that five staff on a headquarters is a really, really small unit. So I would like to take the opportunity to attack that. And I wouldn't even mind attacking this armored car, especially, okay, we do have armored, uh, that's, that's very reassuring. At least we have anti-tank weapons here. And we're moving forward with some more anti-tank weapons, which is also good. This guy can only get to here though. That's frustrating. And where can you get? Only to here. Which we'll have to do because we kind of... <laughs> I don't think this guy's going to be in position to cut us off. I mean, do any kind of attack on the rear, but... If we were able to push this guy out somehow even, it would... He's exerting a lot of zone of control pressure, just making us tiptoe around him. Costing a lot of action points. Uh, I mean, I could even attack this unit too. That's another decent unit to attack. Well, we have Fishhawk. This is the important thing. Let's stay on target. Um, focus here. The point would probably be to cover this road. Just so we secure our supply line. But we don't need to secure a supply line, actually. Because we're so well defended in here, even though it's only three tanks. Anybody attacking into the city is still going to be attacking with a bit of a penalty unless they're regular infantry, and regular infantry still don't do that well against um, armored cars. And we have the nine, the 6th infantry. It's a good buffer. And not only that, but we, I think, oh, can we transfer units? Yeah, we can use land cap to actually transfer some units in. Okay, well... Let's, since they only have 10 action points, let's just transfer some units in. Let's give them two machine guns and two rangers. We can actually use rail capacity? Doesn't make sense. We just captured the rail this turn. Huh. Sometimes I guess it doesn't let you, and sometimes it does. Oh, we actually have to be... Oh, we're okay. We only have three standard light tanks, so they can't carry as many units. But I already don't load my units super strongly. I only load them with half capacity. You can see from here that um, these have each one has five weight carrying capacity. I'm only using, since I'm only putting in 10 infantry, they only have to carry 10. So we're still good. We could lose another tank and we could still carry all the people here. Good, so that should be helpful. That should help us hold Fishhawk. Hmm. So basically, does it matter if we're cut off? I don't think so. 
We can move somebody forward twice in order to bombard if they do cut off here. And we'll have plenty of infantry in place. This benefit will go away at the end of their turn, so I think we'll just attack this unit. Okay, let's do it. We immediately crush them, and that eliminates the force altogether. Good. So I don't know if it's important to move forward here. This one has anti take guns, which means that it's probably okay for me to move out. However... Yeah, I, actually I will. It'll be better for us to have more scouting, more reconnaissance in this area. And I can actually do this if I want. I can move this one forward to cut this guy off, which is even better. Now, I want to try to get this guy some anti-tank if I can. Do we have any anti-tank weapons? <laughs> we don't. All right, this is kind of crazy, but can I get this guy anti-tank weapons from all the way over here? Yes, well, maybe. Okay, yes, we can get him one. Okay, that's all we need, just something. Something which will defend him from any kind of armored counterattack. And he needs a horse. Can we give him a horse? Yeah. Good. Very good. Excellent. So, he got his anti-tank weapons as well, delivered to him. A little truck comes in, drops off the anti-tank gun and a group of horses to pull it, and then they're out. Let's see. So this guy's still out of supply. I think the best thing for us to do is to build another road forward, and probably all we need to do. We probably should also move up with our headquarters so that we're a little closer to the action over here. It's going to help with HQ proximity. Here, I think we're good. We don't need to attack this guy. He put himself out of supply, I'm assuming. And we're covering both hexes that they can actually try to um, escape from. So they can't push past us. So we'll still move forward with this tank unit. The question is, do we move forward here or here? Um, yeah, I think we actually keep spreading out. Although he'll be able to move further if he's on the road next turn, but yeah, we're gonna keep moving, uh, keep spreading out. This guy can't move any further. Yeah, we've moved everyone we can basically. So it's good. This is what our lines are gonna look like down here in the south. I don't know if I don't think we're gonna attack this unit. We might as well just wait for him to start decaying a little more. Okay. I mean, a probing attack when We have a lot of units that are held up, though. There's that whole opportunity cost thing. The more time you spend surrounding a unit, the less time that those units can spend on the front. All right, well, over here we can do at least some artillery bombardment and stuff like that. So... We can even play a charge card. I, did this guy have a charge card he could have played? Yes. Although, there's nobody to really use it with, huh? <laughs> I don't think we've attacked with any basic infantry. Yeah, so let's not do that. Let's go ahead and um, just save our charge card. I don't think there's any place we need to attack. Ideally, the French and Germans, since they're right next to each other, will continue their hostilities. So let's bombard this guy with two of our units. 51 versus 54, but this is eight more here. This has a truck which we can possibly kill. This also has a truck. Okay, we'll bombard this one. And I'll take my two weaker ones and I'll use my two better ones against the... Nah, actually, let's use the two better ones over here. They'll get more bang for our buck. We even killed an armored car. That's always nice. Wow, we're doing a lot of damage. Jeez. Wow, decimated that force. Okay, now let's do the bombardment over here with basically everyone left, which is going to be the ones in my headquarters and the ones that are detached. You can see how important artillery is. Without artillery, we would be nowhere. It's so, so influential. The tide has turned more from artillery than it has from my armor, although armor allows us to exploit the breakthroughs of what that armor is allowing us to make. So it's a really good one-two combination. Artillery, the Schwerpunkt Doctrine says that you 
focus your forces intensely on one part of the enemy line, which they, I mean, theoretically are covering all spots evenly. You break through, and then uh, by massing your forces on one little point, putting a lot of pressure, like it's a pressure, if you know physics, what, how pressure works. That's how a pin punches through your skin. It's by pressure. Such a small area, the force is uh, magnified. Well, it's not magnified, it's just the, the force is <laughs> incident on such a small area that only such a small area is able to receive the force. Probably didn't make any sense, but in my head it does. And at least there's something to be said about that. Okay, so over here, what are we going to do? I think we'll attack, bombard this guy with our weaker artillery and bombard the urban hex with our stronger artillery. Good, so that was very effective. <laughs> this guy is basically dead. I don't know if it's even worth attacking him with... I just assume that with one readiness, he can't do anything, so I'm only going to attack with my machine gun. Good, they instantly died, and I suppose we can instantly attack these guys. They're as low as they're going to get as far as, um, yeah, they're as low on readiness as they're going to get for being cut off. I think 10 is where the enemy forces neutralize at. So let's just do a double attack to finish them off. Good, very good. Okay, no use in, no use in moving the machine guns there. Of course, there's no use not moving them there. Unless we want to move him far back west. We'll just move there for fun. Complete the attack. Now we want to bombard these guys. Don't expect too much, but something. Keep them on their toes. Yeah, we didn't really um, do too much damage to them with that. But that's okay. We finally brought up a good support amount. We have one unit fully ready to go with rangers here, and another one right here. These guys can move wherever we want. This one armored car is a little stubborn. It almost seems like a good target for an attack. Without moving forward though, because we don't want to put ourselves in fields next to armored cars. Of course it is a little risky. Everything is. What we could do is move this ranger unit here and then attack from three sides with um, regular infantry, so we don't suffer a penalty. And machine guns are not very good at fighting tanks. Only 40 on the attack, whereas our normal rangers are gonna be a 75 on the attack. Is it worth it though? Is it like, is one armored car so worth it? Well, actually, it's also part of the division card that cost them a political point. That's also important. So I'm going to say yes, let's do it. And we're attacking with mortars too, which should be helpful. All right, so our attack stack is below the limit. We get the 20% concentric bonus advantage and we outnumber them by a lot. We're attacking armored cars, so they're not getting their offensive bonus. We still lost four units. <laughs> that was not worth it. I'm surprised we lost that many units really, but that wasn't worth it, so. Okay, um, to cover, we're going to move our machine guns back over here just to make sure that our artillery is well covered because the machine guns here are already going to be doing a lot of defensive work, especially the submachine guns. So good. Coutance is still well protected. Unexpected losses. Okay, so now we have two units here. I think what we're going to want to do is... Okay, let's bombard this guy with one of them, the weaker one. Oh, we even got one to retreat. Be even better if we had gotten some kills, but that's still something. And I think what we're going to do is actually do an attack here, which is going to free up the zone of control for this artillery to move here, and then do an artillery bombardment probably of here. Same kind of idea, except for the readiness is even lower. And yeah, we'll be attacking with all three, I think. Yeah. Good. So unfortunately that lowers the readiness of this, but hopefully that's compensated for by the extra action points that we're going to get in our bombardment of this unit. And we're not gonna move forward. 
Actually, this uh, unit could be attacked again. And this is a mortar unit, once again. With one armor car at three readiness, let's do it. Yes, good, very good. That's what I was hoping for to happen against the unit over here, but that's good. So we eliminated that unit, and now we can do bombardment here. Get five rounds, which is... It would have only been four rounds if we didn't eliminate the zone of control that this armor car was exerting. Hmm... Well, their readiness dropped, but really, um, uh, <laughs> it, we didn't do too much damage. All right, the other one we're going to do, we're going to continue our constant bombardment of this hex. Also very effective. Compared to the other one, not that much more effective. Still, it's keeping them from doing any kind of breakthroughs. Actually, uh, what I noticed is we have two units with anti-tank guns here and none here. So what we're going to do is switch the two infantries, the two riflemen. And this guy moved down here. That way, um, we have AT guns in both of them, just to prevent the breakthroughs. And actually, uh, this unit has higher staff, 108. The red one is starting to get a little low on staff, 94. So I'm going to absorb this red unit with my yellow headquarters. He's going to lose his uh, Blitz hand card, but he doesn't have any uh, tanks yet anyway, which is really something we should start doing. However, right now the factory is currently supplying our central headquarters with um, tanks. So actually, that reminds me, we did that this turn, so we can actually transfer four standard light tanks. And this is now we have this... Um, Beautiful tank unit. <clears throat> is the breakthrough going to come here, or should we move this? I think we move this one north, so let's move it up to here. Yeah, good. I'm happy about that. Looks like we can reverse these two um, machine guns as well. Because the red should be closer to the red. Actually, do you have... Oh, let's create a new formation here as well. Just to get the artillery that we just used out of here. So they are spent, but our actual headquarters... We're going to move southeast, a little bit closer to the red people over here. And presumably, one he this hex or this hex is the same distance away from anybody here. So we are one further away from these guys. <clears throat> However, there's something to be said about just, um, let's see, switching this headquarters as well. Yeah. So the you can see the HQ proximity is 60% versus 20%. <clears throat> so we'll get more of a positive effect from the headquarters if we switch this one over to yellow. And you can see that this guy's at 105 and this guy is at 98. So this will help balance out our HQ load. Good, so now these guys are at 101, which is perfect. Just right about where we want them. And these guys are also at 101, that's perfect. And the proximity is better for these guys too. 60%, where it was only 20%. Good. Tanks are starting to move up. We're gonna do that breakthrough and hopefully do the same exact thing to Neem. Just ninja attack it. Break through and push all the way in. Okay. Let's see here. Do we have anything else we need to do? I don't think we'll do an attack. We did my artillery bombardment. We probably need to just switch some forces around. Yeah, so we need to get ready for another tank unit to be created next turn. So we'll get the eight and two ready. And then we need to transfer some more units to people. Let's get some more staff to all these guys. Maybe six, let's do eight per. Then we need another 10 machine guns. Let's do 15 total over here. Another 10 rangers, why not? Um, four more horses. 
Rifles are okay. Everything else is okay, I think. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And then let's also... We actually want to do a transfer backwards, too, with at least one AT gun, so that the gray unit has one of these two AT guns. How many does yellow have? They have seven, so we'll do the backwards transfer with yellow, obviously. Oh, we should actually give yellow some more as well. So yellow, actually, I want to supply this unit with a few more. Let's get the two rifles over. And let's give a few machine guns over as well. How about four? Seems good. They can auto supply the rest of the units, but that's I definitely wanted to do that to keep this unit nice and strong. It's now 128. That's a little better. Because it's just it's at the corner. It's obviously a pretty threatened hex. That they they can move in here and do a three side attack, which is the only place they can do a three side attack on like any part of this front. So just be a little careful about that. All right, and then. But yeah, so let's transfer to here, but let's use not the cap provided by yellow. You can switch which headquarters if you're transferring between two headquarters, which headquarters is using the cap by just clicking this. So we're gonna use the rail cap still, and we're gonna transfer, I think two AT guns back down south so that um, the rail headquarters has the ability to transfer head, um, AT guns to its own units, which is better. We're still at 110 here, we're at 103 here, and 103 here. So let's do four more to staff to each of these guys. And four more here. Before I do this transfer, I'm actually gonna move this unit one more forward. Just gonna help with the HQ proximity over here. It was obviously getting a little bit stretched. And that's gonna, these guys, these yellow are probably only 40% now. No, actually they should, since we moved diagonal to the right, down to the right, it takes one ha one movement for us to get to this hex, and then we trace the same line over there from either of these. So it shouldn't, this should still be at 60. Okay, now what was I doing? One, two, three, four. Okay, good, 105, 106, 107. That's just about right. Okay, um, any other transfers we wanna do? We have plenty of Ranger units, so let's also get more of those in the field. The question is, where do we need them? I think we need one right here, in fact. Let's get one more here. A new Special Forces unit. We can move him, yeah, right there is fine. We don't know where he'll be needed quite yet, but actually there's kind of this blank in the, our lines here. They won't be able to move more than just one space here because uh, they're gonna have to cross a stream and then go into marsh. So they that's gonna cost over 50 action points and they usually co cost 50 action points to do an attack. So we should be okay, especially because they're probably not perfect on readiness. But let's see, and where else should these rangers go? We have plenty of rangers, less so anything else. Oh, we do have plenty of submachine guns too. So let's transfer some more rangers places. We need another 10 here. And probably another 10 here, maybe even, we can probably get a whole nother ranger group up in the north, because we were a little thin. Actually, maybe we need it here. I don't know, see there's, <laughs> I haven't thought about this enough off camera, but let's just do another 10 to each group. And that's all I'll do for now. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Oh, before I go, <laughs> I almost forgot. We have enough political points to do the next machine gun upgrade, so I'm gonna buy that. And my last action of the turn is going to be to upgrade all those units. Let me just upgrade this. Say hello to my beautiful wife, hold on. Okay, upgrade those units. We've done that, so that should put us at a really good advantage. Um, the machine gun threes are significantly better than machine guns two. And we do have machine gun twos, or now threes, strewn about all about. Let's just quickly show you what I mean by the difference between threes and twos. You can see that they do even better against infantry. 
So 360 versus 450, 120 versus 150. They also have the 25 hit point upgrade. That's a pretty solid increase. Good, so let's end the turn and see how it goes. Oh, we were attacked. Oh, I think we were attacked and lost. We were attacked again. Okay, so one of them was a loss. We lost artillery? Oh, that would be anti-tank weapons, though. Hmm, okay, let's see what happened here. So they obviously attacked us here, but they didn't decide to follow up. Strange. Okay, so they, yeah, they did a breakout. I should have defended that hex more. Why didn't I defend that hex more? That was silly. Yeah, so they did defeat us. They Even though we had anti-tank guns, they were able to... With only armored cars, I don't understand how that works. Armored cars aren't that very, aren't good against artillery either. But, okay, so our anti-tank guns did not were no match for their armored cars. And they didn't really take any infantry losses. So we ended up losing quite a bit there. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Well, good news is I just put two new AT guns into this headquarters, so we know where they have to go. <laughs> that's still unfortunate. And then they also didn't attack up here. This one didn't go as poorly. It didn't go well, but it was about three to one. And they lost a truck, which is always important. And that's it. Huh. Wow. Well, I kind of want to just go through this really briefly. Let's see what what's happening in the world. What's happening... What are they doing? They're shifting. They have a huge hole in their lines, but again, that's hard for me to breach. They're kind of relying on the impassable terrain. And it's a good assumption that I'm not gonna to try to push through the mountains. So then this is probably where they, they're moving up. That's where they did their attack. We have to try to keep them isolated. So it's gonna be very important to cut them off here because they did reconnect. Yeah, there's the reconnection and they escaped. They did the other attack. And then there's some moving off camera. So it looks like, I mean, Fishhawk is te technically out of supply, but really uh, it's gonna be a very simple matter to re-secure <laughs> and also gonna be a simple matter to cut them off. Just boom, 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 lots of things. But, and we'll even be able to attack this staff with our um, tanks and totally overrun them. Staff are just no good against anything, so least of all tanks, but they're very poor against infantry. Okay, so I'll save it here. We'll call this episode to a close. It was a very good episode. We were able to take Fishhawk by surprise, basically, <laughs> which means that we've now conquered two cities, and that's going to make Germany a lot weaker. We've already made France a lot weaker, and we're positioning some nice tank units so that we can break through and actually get through to Nîmes. Okay, good. Well, um, that's going to bring this episode to a close. So thanks for watching, and in the next episode, hopefully, Neem. <laughs>